In August of 2023, the family and I went on a two-part vacation to Southern California, with the first stop being three days in Huntington Beach. This was our second family trip to Huntington Beach, and I think we nailed it this time. Here's our recommendation for what to do on a family vacation to Huntington Beach. Wondering what the second leg of the trip was? Stay to the end and I'll cover that. Teaser, it was a great combination of places to visit on a road trip. We drove to Huntington Beach from Northern California. It was a six-hour drive for us. We went on a Monday and timed it to avoid the worst of Los Angeles traffic. We stayed at the Waterfront Beach Resort, which is a Hilton property. While we were there, we explored other nearby resorts and hotels. And if it's in your budget, this definitely looks like the best place to stay in Huntington Beach. Use one of the links in the description to book it and it supports this channel at no cost to you. The Waterfront Resort is big, very clean, the staff was great, and this 100% has that big resort vibe. It's very family friendly and it's right next to the ocean. Let's cover the amenities and what there is to do here. The resort has two towers, the nicer of which seems to be the Twin Dolphins Tower. If staying with a family, I highly recommend considering a family suite. They cost a little more, but they give you a separate bedroom and living room area, and you can choose from a wide variety of views. The Waterfront Beach Resort in Huntington Beach has two very different pools. One is a more standard resort pool that during our stay was much less crowded than the other pool, which is a kid's pool. The kid's pool gets as deep as three and a half feet, so it was perfect for our four-year-old who could stand in almost every part of it. There are two water slides on it, but you do have to be over 48 inches tall and able to swim to use the slides. Floaties are not allowed and you have to go one at a time, so small kids can't go with mom and dad. The kid's pool was pretty packed and you have to get there pretty early to grab chase lounges. There's a full bar with food and drink service available at the pools. All of this, of course, with resort pricing. My wife's colorful cocktail was 18 bucks. You can rent cabanas, but they were also very expensive. I'm talking like $600 a day or something. So we didn't do that. Each pool also has a large hot tub. The hot tub in the kids' pool, I'd say, is warm, while the hot tub at the adult pool was very hot. The pools close at 10. The water slides and outdoor bar close around dinner time. As for restaurants, the Waterfront Resort has a few on-site restaurants, and I'll cover other walkable dining options in just a minute. The main restaurant inside the Waterfront Beach Resort is Sammy Hagar's Cabo Wabo Cantina, which serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and has a full bar. It's right next to the kids' pool. It has indoor and outdoor seating. We ate here for lunch once. The menu is Cabo-style Mexican food. It was very good, but it's definitely served at resort prices. The other main restaurant is Henry's Coastal Cuisine, which appears to just be open for dinner. It looks fancy and has indoor and outdoor seating. We did not eat there and instead made a short walk to find a dinner spot each night. There's a cafe in the hotel that serves all the fancy coffee drinks you'd want in the morning. Throughout the day, it doubles as a pizza place. Lots of families were getting pizzas and bringing them to the pool. They looked really good. The shop also sells beer, wine, non-alcoholic drinks, and snacks to go so you can bring them back to the room. But the resort is just one part of the Huntington Beach vacation. The waterfront is located right across the street from a massive sandy beach. That street, by the way, is the famous Pacific Coast Highway. Although the beach can get busy, there's a lot of room to spread out and crowding wasn't an issue for us during the weekdays we stayed there. The waves were really strong and there was a major surfing competition going on nearby, which was pretty cool. There are a lot of lifeguards on duty, probably because of how strong the waves and undertow are. There are two concession stands on the beach. One is open only on the weekends, but the other one, Jack's, was open all week and was probably the most reasonably priced food I found the entire trip. You can walk down the Huntington Pier, which has a few souvenir shops and a really cool view. And just down the beach, you find the Pacific City Shopping Mall. This is a two-story indoor-outdoor mall with lots of shops and a handful of restaurants that we really liked. Simsy's was one of the best burger places I've found in a long time. Ola is a higher-end Mexican restaurant we enjoyed one night. And there were others that looked good here too, but we didn't get to them all. The prices were better at these restaurants than at the resort. And all restaurants had a wide selection of beer, wine, cocktails, and mixed drinks. The first time we visited Huntington Beach, we went on a weekend and the whole place was pretty packed. This time we chose to go Monday through Thursday in August and the crowds were much more reasonable. Downtown Huntington Beach is also just a short walk from the resort. Lots more shopping and food downtown. If you're there on a Tuesday, the city of Huntington Beach shuts a big portion of the roads down for the farmer's market in the evening. And this was really cool. So much California beach vibe and lots of things to do and see. Oh, and if you're downtown, just try this gelato place. Don't think about it. Just try it and you'll thank me later. If you're on an even tighter budget, there are more restaurants and grocery stores a short drive or Uber trip from the resort. The rooms in the hotel have refrigerators, but no microwaves. We did stock up on snacks and drinks for the room when we got there. As I said, we drove to Huntington Beach from Northern California. 
but of course some may choose to fly. John Wayne Airport is 12 miles from the resort and barring terrible traffic, that's only 20 minutes away. The worst part about driving may have been the price to park at the resort. It was like $48 per night with come and go privileges and there just wasn't really a way around paying it. Of course, there's plenty of other things to do in Huntington Beach, but we filled our three days up with pool time, shopping, and going to the beach without ever driving anywhere. We will come back to this place. The Waterfront Beach Resort in Huntington Beach was one of the best California hotels we've stayed in. Staff was incredibly friendly, and the place was just really, really nice. I said this was part one of a two-part road trip. What we did on the way home to break up the drive was we detoured to Solvang, the Danish capital of America and we are so glad we did. Watch this video next to see what we did there and where we recommend staying in Solvang.